Welcome to Forum 360 with its global outlook and local view. I'm Ardeth Keck. If you are not familiar with the name Sojourner Truth, we are going to give you a history lesson. So please pay attention as I talk with my guest, Teresa Carter, president of the Synthomer Foundation, and Leanne Neff Hepner, president and CEO of the Summit County Historical Society of Akron. We welcome our two very prestigious guests to talk about Sojourner Truth. They are both on the committee to raise funds to create a Sojourner Truth statue and plaza in Akron. Why Sojourner Truth? Why is it important to have a statue in Akron? And who was she? Leanne. Well, you know, it's fabulous to have this opportunity to talk about this momentous woman <coughs> from our past. And actually, she was crossing through Akron for this opportunity in May of 1851 at the Women's Ohio Women's Convention. And so that's why we're talking about her. She spoke up and she shared information that became really known as the most influential um, speech on women's rights and abolitionism in the United States. And uh, so w is it important to have a statue here because she spoke here? Well, it's important to commemorate the location from where she made that speech because it transitioned um, not just Akron, Ohio, but our nation. And why would we want to do it in Akron? To let people know about the fact that the Western Reserve was the hotbed of abolitionism at the time and connect those stories, those individuals that came into this area and made a national impact. Others like John Brown as well. Let's track Sojourner Truth back in time. She was born a slave. Where was that, Teresa? Well, she was born in, it was New York City. What was they? In Ulster County, New Ulster York. Ulster County, New York, absolutely. And so, and then traveled around the world because as she was a slave at that point, and then she had a family, and then she was moved from her family. And uh, it's just a long history of how she even got here and how she transformed herself to speaking and becoming a preacher and all those good things to get here to tell her story and to fight for women's rights. But even before Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, mm -hmm. she w became free. How did that happen? Well, uh, it is interesting uh, because it's confusing. You don't mm -hmm. think that anyone in the North would have been under the, the slavery bond, but um, New York did have slaves, and in 1828 they were going to end that with emancipation. She actually was able to negotiate with the gentleman, uh, Mr. Dumont, of which she was living in and as a slave to him because of her good works that she would actually become free a year early. But unfortunately, he didn't keep his promise. And so she took matters into her own hands and made it happen. And was Sojourner Truth her real name? No, that is the name that she personified. And, um, and as our committee has worked on is talking about why she had that transition, mm -hmm. her name actually was Isabella Bohm Free. Uh, later, she took on the name of the family who helped her to have her freedom, which was Van Wagenen. Isabella mm -hmm. Van Wagenen. So she was Isabella, not Sojourner. Right. But it was because she had gotten this premonition from God that gave her her anointment to move forward to do the work that she was doing that she changed her name to Sojourner Truth and started her journey along that route. And people have said to me when I said we're going to do this show, um, Sojourner, where did she get that from? I, it, to me it means somebody who travels? Absolutely. She, as Teresa said, she felt that she was given this right from God to, to preach become an itinerant preacher to spread the good word to tell the truth. And that brings me to another question I have for you. Uh, was she religious? Very. <laughs> and back in that day, you know, slaves were known to be religious because you pulled from your faith to get through, right? So the way she had been treated, they just knew that it was God that was watching over them to get them through. So her passion for his word and her preaching the word and sharing and giving inspiration to others is why she um, did what she did and she believes so deeply in her religious values. And uh, can you describe her? Describe her structure? Her phys physically. Yes, she, she actually was a very large and tall woman. Mm -hmm. She was a 
probably 5'11 or 6 feet tall, and she was very muscular. She was extremely strong because she worked hard. She could work as hard as any man, it was stated, actually. As she said in her speech. She said that in her speech, and actually, um, you know, I, I actually don't like using the word master. It's uncomfortable for me, but historically, if that's the owner of the slave, then her master, Mr. Dumont, said she could work actually uh, as much as six white men, six mm -hmm. common men. But very stately because she was very confident, I think, in who she was and understanding that she had this will and desire and had this mission. So she had to fight and be courageous and brave. So, I mean, she just stood in her own presence to be the great woman that she is or was. Absolutely. Her mm -hmm. confidence from God mm -hmm. gave her that presence. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, I think we have a, a photograph of her, which we will show. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a former slave. Could she read and write? Nope. She was illiterate, could not read and write, but could speak and could share and could voice what it was that she wanted to get across. And so she had people around her that traveled with her mm -hmm. that we could you know, translate to her what others were saying or could even write her message that she was giving so that she could know right, what um, she had said and that people could understand where she was coming from when she delivered those great messages. And the, that was no, um, that was no fault of hers um, because right. she was not allowed to be taught to read or write, but it also did not reflect on her intelligence uh, because she was a, a extremely knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. When she would quote the Bible, it's from memorizing it. And um, the fact is that sh her um, first language was Dutch. And so then right. English was her second language. And, and so then it just um, brings your esteem for her and her eloquence mm -hmm. even higher. Exactly. And she published or someone published a narrative of Sojourner Truth. How did that happen? Well, she was greatly inspired by Frederick Douglass's um, excellence and um, all the books that he sold about his biography. And so she worked with Olive Gilbert to produce her booklet. It took about three years to be able to share her story and have it then transcribed. And it was William Lloyd Garrison that helped put her in touch with the publisher to make it happen in 1850. And why did she want to publish a narrative of Sojourner Truth? Well, you know, that was a way for her to make money as well. Uh -huh. you know, again, she knew that Frederick Douglass had done it, so she says, hey, why not, right? So she did that, and as they traveled, <coughs> um, she used that to, um, that people paid to get it, and the postcards and all of that with her information on it, and so that, that was her money-making um, process. And she wanted to own her own home. So how is she going to do that? Right. She's going to make money in a big way. And um, although she, she priced her book too low, it was mm. 25 cents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but even an entrepreneur back in those That's days, right? right? She That's knew right. what she needed to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was she famous in her day? Yes, she was, actually. I mean, and I would say that she probably went through phases, like you think of today, of people's um, popularity um, gathering and, um, and lowering, is that after the 1851 um, convention here in Akron, she was well noted. She was known mm -hmm. in the larger circles. Um, Harry Beecher Stowe was writing about her, but really um, her popularity comes again to the forefront when Frances Dana Gage produces 12 years after the event, the speech that we know today as Ain't I a Woman? Um, and that then just skyrockets her popularity again. Yeah. And even though there was controversy around that, right, because she That's never right. really said it in her speech, but, you know, she was a trailblazer, even back mm -hmm. then. She wasn't afraid, she didn't have fear, because again, God was leading her, but she knew this is something she had to do. So going around speaking and sharing and insisting that, again, women's rights, because a part of her big speech was, mm -hmm. even though it was for women to have the right to vote, people of color still at that point did not have that right mm -hmm. and she just talked about all of that in her in her words and so it it resonated and people talked about it so her you you're bringing out the fact that one of her beliefs was that women should have the right to vote oh absolutely what was another of her beliefs well that all people should um, be treated equally and mm -hmm. have their freedom that so individuals should a, not be held in bondage right she was an abolitionist yes, yes, she was Okay, there's some 
controversy about her talk in Akron, and you mentioned Gage, and she, w she wrote a, a talk that was full of, of dialect, almost difficult to read. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the controversy. <laughs> well, I, I think it's very interesting um, from a historian's standpoint because what Gage produced um, must be taken at the time that it was written. And so here we are in the throes of the Civil War. And um, so in some aspects you have to wonder, is she writing things to draw attention to the abolitionist cause? Um, and how much of that may be propaganda. So when you look at what Gage wrote in terms of what was happening, that they were upset that an African-American woman was in Akron at the conference and that the local pastors were downplaying the role of women and their opportunities, um, you look at the other side of that historically and Amarius Robinson shows none of that. So it can be very confusing, and I think that looking at the time period and understanding why Gage might have written it is very helpful. So the controversy actually has controversy, if that makes sense from a historic <laughs> standpoint. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, plaza in a moment. Can you tell me which um, <clears throat> version of her speech will be inscribed on the plaza? Well, our committee has definitely spent a lot of time talking about it, and um, because um, Marius Robinson recorded um, the speech so close to the time that it was presented, and he had the permission of Sojourner Truth because they were friends. She actually had been staying with he and his wife Emily in Salem, Ohio, not very far away, um, that that is the speech that we'll be looking at. That's the speech that we've been using with our material um, to prepare and share with the public, especially our work with the Akron Public Schools and many mm -hmm. students throughout our region. So we have an education committee. We are working with the National Trust Fund, African American Heritage Fund that the Knight Foundation works so closely with us to bring in. They have experts around the world that's working on this project with us to talk about what should we do. And, and I think at some point it may be both versions, you know, because it, mm -hmm. it is controversial. So the whole education piece, the whole, what it started out, what it really said, I think they're going to try to find a way to incorporate it in everything. So it's a work in progress, but it's going to be amazing because we have some fantastic people at the table working with us to make it happen. Yes, and my notes indicate that way back in May of 1999, there was a committee to try to get funding for a statue of Sojourner Truth in Akron. It didn't happen, obviously, right. and now we have a great committee, and uh, I want you to tell me about that and, and what you're trying to do. Well, I just first, um, <laughs> historically, we'd like to just reference Faye Dambra and mm -hmm. her role in the Women's History Project and others that were uh, companions on that project, um, like Ruth Wright Kleinfelter and um, Dr. Teresa Barley and Dr. Kitty Endress. And unfortunately, it didn't happen at that time, right. but the concept of it never died. Right. And, and so, as Teresa will tell you more about that, we just remember Faye Dambra and we're grateful that her family continues to be involved in the process. Uh, I'm going to interrupt you now to tell our audience that we are discussing Sojourner Truth and the possibility of a statue of Sojourner Truth in Akron. And uh, my guests are Teresa Carter, who is president of the Synthomer Foundation, and Leanne Neff Hepner, who is president and CEO of the Summit County Historical Society of Akron. And uh, we're talking now about the, the committee that has been formed to try to get a plaza and a statue of Sojourner Truth in Akron. Go on. Well, Teresa, I'll let you go ahead and talk yeah. about the current structure of our um, committee. So even though um, Faye, as she said, they weren't able to get the statue done, they were able to get the marker that's at the the building now that's on High Street where the United Way building is housed. But back then it was the Old Stone Universalist Church, I believe it was. So it was, so it was um, the Old Stone U Universalist Church used to be beside the building we know yeah. today as the Sojourner Truth Building and the Ohio Historical Marker is right. what Teresa is referring to. So the marker is there, the building is called the Sojourner Truth Building, so it was only appropriate that that's where she would be, her statue would be. And so working with the United Way who has embraced this project with us, 
excited to allow us now to have their whole front um, it was a parking area that's in front of their building that we're going to transform now into this plaza. And so we will have her statue there. We will have, it, it started out, I will tell you, as just the statue, right? Project was gonna be $400,000 for us to con construct the statue. As we talked about her journey and what it really meant to this community and what she meant and how it should be a part of history here and education for young people to understand and families, it transformed into this entire plaza. So the columns, the, the education pieces, the recognizing of other women who, you know, with her being who she is and how we've stood on her shoulders, you know, and these mm -hmm. folks who have been in this community that's done some dynamic things that we're going to highlight. So it's just been a wonderful project. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. We're still working on it. Um, it, it has now grown to a budget of about close to $2 million, but I'm excited to say that we have raised close to a million and three, Ooh. have about 600,000 in hand, um, but still have a ways to go. But um, working with these organizations who've come to the table, the Akron Community Foundation has been absolutely outstanding working with us. They are our fiscal agent for the project. They're helping us with the fundraising. Um, the Summit County Metro Parks, Lisa King and her team have been very instrumental with us. One of her staff persons and Andre, I think, mm -hmm. was responsible for even doing the um, architectural design of what the plaza mm -hmm. could look like and then working with the African American Heritage Fund and others that they're tweaking it every day, it mm -hmm. seems like, um, to come up with, to just show how it could represent the community and, and what she stood for and what she meant um, during that time. So we're excited about it. So it'll be a full life-size statue of Sojourner Truth, so six foot one or something, however tall she is. What's amazing is, and you can stop me at any time, but <laughs> Woodrow Nash, which is our um, local world-renowned um, artist, is constructing her statue. So he was enlisted by Faye and the group way back when, and he had already done a prototype of her. And so when we reached back out to him, he said, absolutely, yes. So he's going to be um, doing her statute for us now. So he has created a prototype. Yes, we have a prototype. And so he's tweaking that as we speak, too, because there were some things that they thought his art is so fantastic. And I don't know if you've known mm -hmm. about Woodrow Nash. He's right here in our own community, been around for years. He was yeah. born here in the late 40s. And here he is, this awesome, I mean, he does work for many stars and professionals all over the United States, all over the world, that wow. has his, um, you know, so he's a pretty amazing African-American artist that's right here in our own community. So you have this historic Sojourner Truth and you have this, you know, black artist that's been around forever right here in our community. And so we're just thrilled with all of the folks who have come to the table to make this happen. Well, suppose people want to donate. They're inspired by what you're talking about. What do they do? So we have a couple websites. Again, I talked about the Akron Community Foundation, so they can visit their website and, and make contributions there. We have the Summit Suffrage Centennial um, that they can kind of go on the website there and, and look. We have our own um, truthstatute2020.com, at gmail.com, that people can send an email if they want more information. So we're getting the word out. Uh, we're, we're getting folks engaged and involved and asking them to just, any amount helps because we have this to raise. We want to make it fantastic. It's going to get done and we need support of the community. All right, it's going to get done. It's going I love to get those done. words. Yes, it has <laughs> I to. love those words. Uh, how about the city? Has the city helped or the county helped? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The city and the county has come in in a major way. United Way has come in. We've had um, organizations, corporations have come in, individuals, great philanthropists who have given to the project. So it's, it's a big deal. Everybody has embraced it for the most part. And again, we still need others that we're knocking on the door every single day, writing letters, sending it out, telling them about the project, telling them the significance of just having her here and what it would mean to this community. And every individual donation counts. So if you want to give $20, we yes. would be pleased with that. And each person will be recognized. Um, higher level donors will be yeah. recognized closer on site, but every single person that donates will be recognized through our website. Yeah. How about telling us again those sites that they can go to? 
So we have the summit suffrage centennial.com backslash truth. And we summit can give you that. Summit suffrage continual? Centennial. Oh, centennial. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because all of this started with the 100th anniversary of the centennial for the mm -hmm. women's suffrage movement. And then there is the truth.2020.statute at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And that's where we will respond back to you and you can get more information. And then the AkronCF.org, and that's AkronCommunityFoundation.org. So you have SummitSuffrageCentennial.com backslash truth. <laughs> you have the AkronCF.org. And then you can reach out to us at truth.2020.statute at gmail.com. It's a lot, but we'll give that to you so you can put up for your audience. <laughs> and, and, those, and those people that go to the Akron Community Foundation, what's really nice is you can go to one of, I want to donate to a fund, and um, at the question, put in Sojourner Truth, and it'll pull yes. right up. Easy stuff. That makes it easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was uh, Sojourner Truth married? She was, actually. Um, she was not married to the love of her life, right. unfortunately. She um, loved Robert, or Bob, and he lived at a neighboring home, and the families didn't like that. And uh, sadly, he was beat for visiting her and continuing that um, relationship. And so um, both um, were encouraged, or basically forced, to marry someone that lived on the property where they were. And so she did marry, and she had five children. Yep. She had five, okay. But they were all sold? It, it, separated. Oh. Yes, except for except Sophia, the youngest, the youngest that child. she took with her when she walked her yeah. way to freedom. And I, I've learned from the bio that she uh, took some grandchildren with her when she went to speak. And that's interesting. So obviously she was close to her family. So as um, Teresa mentioned, her other children had been sold and um, she won a, a a court case um, getting the um, the next youngest, Peter, back because he had been sold further south, which was illegal. Um, and then after that, she was able to continue to develop relationships and to partner with her other children. And so later in life, those children were involved with her. And as you said, her grandchildren then could go with her. She felt it was very important, like her mother had taught her that she then would pass on the information to her children and grandchildren her religious beliefs and abolitionism and feminism. Yes. She died in 1883, but um, and probably about 86, but it was claimed that she was 105. Uh, why the confusion? Well, you have to think at the time, um, slaves would not have had access to a calendar and most items were dated by the season. So how many seasons had passed? How can you relate to when somebody else had been sold off to maybe know what year it was? It was very confusing for them to know and to even mark. And she didn't know exactly how old she was. No, she did not. Right. So uh, what was her legacy? Why was she so famous? It wasn't just the speech in Akron. It was much more than that. Well, I think Teresa actually touched on it in terms of the fact that she had this power and compassion and that she would not be stopped. Right. And you described that about the shoulders, which Tawanda Mullins, who's the, the chair right. of our committee, has expressed to us. So mm -hmm. I don't want to take away your thunder, but well, she no, definitely I mean, eloquently talked. She was just talked. courageous, and she was very passionate, and she had the will to just move forward to fight for what she knew was right. And so when you think about what she did and her purpose, and what it meant for all of us. I'm sitting here today because of a Sojourner Truth, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's her legacy. I think she left something for us to look back on to say, how dare us not fight now when it's something important, um, when she worked so very hard to just get us to this point, and others who had come along the way. But she really stood out there with her passion and desire to make a difference. And she could not be stopped. Could not. No. She could Would not. not. Right. Wonderful. Yes. What were some of the famous people that she knew? She knew Harriet Beecher Stowe. You said she was mm -hmm. writing about her. Who else? Oh, you mentioned Frederick Douglass. Well, Frederick Douglass, and I think Abraham Lincoln was That's one. right, President yeah. Lincoln. Um, uh, oh, um, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. I always get her names mixed up. I want to call them in the wrong order. Mm -hmm. um, Susan B. Anthony even used her likeness, and William Lloyd Garrison. Yeah. I mean, these were individuals that were very well known um, talking about um, abolitionism right. and women's rights. And Elizabeth Cady Stanton and uh, Susan B. Anthony used 
uh, Sojourner Truth when they went to speak at various locations and she spoke about women's rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Great, powerful women, right? Yes, indeed. In the fight for justice. That's right. <laughs> um, her biographer, I've mentioned the book before, uh, Nell Irvin Painter, says she was born into slavery and died a legend. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a copy of the painting of Sojourner Truth with President Lincoln, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they met, but the painting is not actually historically correct. Ah, thank you, Leanne and Teresa, for coming to Forum 360. And thank you, our audience, for joining us on Forum 360 to learn about the legend, Sojourner Truth. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.